Ever since vibe coding became a thing, thanks to this guy, Andrej Karapati, companies have rushed to become the next Google, Microsoft, or Facebook, but for AI power coding. And right now, honestly, it's a mess. So there are hundreds of tools claiming to solve every single problem. Sure, it sounds great at first. Anyone can build anything. But if you're not technical, it quickly becomes overwhelming. And most non-technical founders, designers, or marketers just get lost in all the noise. And eventually, they give up and pass it back to the engineers. But not anymore. So today, we're solving exactly this problem. We'll break down every important step to take your idea and turn it into a real, launchable app and of course, without writing a single line of code. We've handpicked the absolute best tools for each step. Whether that means low-code, no-code, AI or a blend of all three. So here's exactly what you'll see. We take a real app idea, go step by step, from brainstorming, to validating demand, to creating functional designs, even if you've never designed before. All the way to building and launching a fully working product. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly how to turn your ideas into reality. No coding required. And all you need is the right tools, in the right order, and a clear path forward. So let's dive in with step number one. Step number one is brainstorming your idea. So first, we need a great idea, and there are two ways that we can go about it. Either you have something in mind, that's us, we know exactly what we're gonna do, or you don't know what you wanna build yet. In both cases, brainstorming tools like Grok, ChatGPT, Claude, DeepSeek, and many, many more come into the picture. As this helps you either come up with a great idea or go from the idea to the actual building blocks. Take a look at how we do it. So here's the idea that we have, a smart calendar app. Look around, everything around you is now powered by AI. From your docs, your spreadsheets, to your note-taking, and even your designing. But calendars are still the same. And you still have to go there, select a slot, type in what you want to do, and all of those unnecessary things. Not sure why this is still the case, but it's still there. And hopefully, Google will soon integrate their AI capabilities into calendar as well, like they've done with email, docs, spreadsheets, and more. But till then, we still think it's worthwhile to build it ourselves. So now, what we're gonna do is we're quickly gonna go to Claude.ai and ask us to give it a project requirements doc for a smart calendar app that will be AI-powered. So now you see, within seconds, we've got a great project requirement doc and everything required to build this project out. So just take a look. And while we've used Claude to get this document, Grok3 by XAI is also a really good tool and you can use it if you're building something that requires you to be updated, requires you to make use of current data, current market analysis, and everything. Because it has real-time access to Reddit and X that other chatbots don't currently have. So XAI's Grok and Claude are our tools of suggestion for this brainstorming and getting an overview of our build. So now that we're done with step one, we're gonna move on to step two, which is validating demand. Now, to make sure that your app is actually worthwhile, that people will actually come and use it on a day-to-day -day basis or even pay for it. So the best way is to build a landing page with all the offerings you wish to give the users in the future. Present it beautifully, present it ambitiously, and put a mailing list for people to sign up. Then market that landing page and see if people sign up. If you have more than 50 people signing up, that means it's more than enough to get started. And why? Because even if you have a minimal charge to it, you'll start making money. For that, we have a bunch of tools available. AI, no code, both. And some great mentions would be to use Lovable, uh, Vercel's V0, Bolt to build the landing page. Or you can use tools like Bubble, Webflow, Framer, Card, if you're a no code kind of person. So our suggestion for this would be to use Framer because it's really, really simple. So on Framer, you'll get a bunch of templates to just go and make a landing page, put in graphics, videos, and text, and start sending the emails. The thing is, you will have every integration there itself. So with AI, if you want adventure, that's okay. You will have a lot of control over what you build but you'll end up doing admin tasks like figuring out mailing list integrations, databases. So in Framer, you can just use a template, put in your thoughts, and it'll be very easy to not think about the design or the integrations too much. So we'll quickly use Framer to set up a landing page for this. So now we're gonna to go to framer.com, sign up, click on new project. And on the left side, you have to click new page. All right, and, and after that, you can select a landing page template. It's really that simple. And in this template, you'll see a header, visual section, feature section, etc. So this is usually how landing pages are made using Framer, and we're just gonna use this for now. So you can use any template from Framer Showcase, but for this video, we'll quickly get started with this one itself. So we'll put the header as AI Calendar. 
go to Google for a hero graphic and put a calendar graphic here to get started. So you can see it's as simple as Canva to just copy and paste it. But with any AI tool, you'd have to generate files, store them in the right format and all of those kind of things. So if you like that, great. But Framer is much better suited for simple landing pages with mailing lists. So now we'll quickly go back to Claude to get other copy material to put here. So we'll ask you to give us a header and features and set up the entire landing page quickly. Okay. So after that, it's not complete, but we'll still publish it to see how it looks. Hey, see, there's a little animation here. You can see the copy that we've put in. And if we spend 15 to 20 minutes over here, it'll be a mad landing page. And I'm pretty sure if we market it well enough, we'll get mailing list users for sure. All right, so that's step number two. Now we're moving on to step number three, which is designing your application. And of course, without any design skills. So now we get to the real building stuff. And for this, again, we have to use a bunch of tools and there are two ways to do it. So we'll start with the first way, which is allowing AI to do everything for you. The tools for this function include Replit Agent, SoftGen, Lovable, Bolt, and many, many more that will do the trick. So our recommendation for this step would be to use lovable.dev, the best tool out there for design capabilities, GitHub integration, Superbase integration, etc. You can also use Bolt if you want, but we prefer Lovable. So the first way that we're talking about is letting AI take all the creative decisions, from UI flows to graphics, everything. You just need to provide the vision of what you want, and you can definitely tweak it based on the first version that it gives you. So now let's give it a shot. In order to let AI do everything, we have to go back to Claude and copy paste the project requirements that you made earlier into Lovable's chat. So let's do that first. Okay, I'm on Claude. I'm copy pasting requirements, opening Lovable, pasting it into chat. Okay, so this is going to create a proper app for you. Front end, back end, UI, everything, everything, even your databases for sure with all of the functionalities. A little hold up over here would be on the UI flows. It's gonna take some time. It's not like everything else will just get generated in seconds. Let it take its time over here. It's following design principles without reinventing the wheel. It's given us a calendar app similar to existing ones. We have a search capability for events and arrangements. We also have a smart assistant on the site, which is our main mode. And you can talk to it. And after talking to it, it'll tell you what to do or how to do a task with much less effort. See, check this out. We can scroll, click on events, create new events. Everything is working smoothly. We can even put in details and it'll just work. Until now, we haven't written a single line of code ourselves. Another way is designing apps using existing designs from the internet. Those designs will be better since AI isn't perfect for design yet. So for that, we're going to be using Figma plus Vercel's front-end builder V0. So now for the next step, we simply need to go to Figma, find calendar app templates from the community and import them into V0. So now you see, design-wise, Figma plus V0 gives a much better looking app. And this is definitely a legit way to build stuff. We just wanted to show another workflow for designing apps, one which is AI assisted and one which is AI driven. But we prefer Lovable because it's an entire ecosystem. Changes happen right in front of your eyes. So let's go back to Lovable. So now we're happy with version one from Lovable. So now we're going to move on to step four, which is building your own app without coding. So now building your app without any coding, but still using coding. So let us explain. So first, what we're going to do is we'll export Lovable's code into a full stack AI app builder. And your options over here would include Windsurf, Cursor, Z, etc. So our choice over here is going to be Cursor. Exporting is really simple. All you need to do is click on the GitHub icon over here at the top right. Log into GitHub in your browser and export. Okay, so now if you see, we've got the code in our GitHub repo with all of the required files. Now, all that's left to do is simply clone the repo into Cursor. To do that, here is the simple terminal command that you need to put, which is git clone, followed by the repo link. And that's it. You'll see all the GitHub files on your local machine. To ensure that Cursor aligns with Lovable's ideas, paste the project requirements doc again. This lets Cursor read the requirements and code base, so it knows what to add, what to change, etc. So see, after that, it's already suggesting changes. And here's the golden rule of vibe coding. You just accept suggestions blindly. And that's exactly what we're going to do. And just like that, we'll reach a point where it works. See, the calendar works, the analytics work, integrations work, and we can also input tasks via voice, which is so convenient. So we built an app that works without writing code. So here we are at the final step, which is launching your application. So we're on to the final steps and with the help of Cursor, we created a fully functional app. So now let's push the code to GitHub and deploy it on Vercel. So in Cursor, you can see the Git icon. 
what you need to do is enter a commit message or ask AI to generate one. Then click on commit, all right? And finally click on sync changes to push the code to your GitHub. So now after that, we're gonna go to Vercel and deploy our application. Now to deploy the application to Vercel, you need to go to vercel.com, start a new project, import your Git repository, click on deploy and wait. All right, so the deployment is done and anyone can visit the app with this link. If this video helped you, make sure you subscribe and please share it with your white coder friends.